Welcome back, guys, to our player preview series, continuing our back line off with a very popular pick this year and much talked about in the off-season, uh, mainly due to his price tag. Elliot Yo has the defender status this, this season after playing some roles down there uh, in his six games last year, not many. Um, but let's go through, as always, go through our checklist. I really like Elliot Yo as a player. Um, you know, finds his own ball, uses it pretty well, wins the hard ball. Um, so if you know at this price, if he can, uh, if he can deliver us nineties or hundreds, it's going to be an absolutely gem of a pick if we can fit it in our structure. So let's go through as always and have a look at our checklist. So scoring pedigree, can Elliot Yo score? Well, the answer is yes. So 2017 through to 2019, he went bang. 102, 108, and 107.6. Just under 108 there in 2018 premiership season. And then, yeah, since then, look, he's really struggled. Really struggled. Hasn't really managed to get on the park at all. And his scoring's obviously reflected that. But the pedigree's there. We know he can score. So, big tick. That's a big tick. We know he can score. Uh, scoring potential. What is his scoring potential? So, let's have a look. And let's just go through maybe 2018 and 2019 and see his scoring potential. So, yeah, a couple of one, 139, 140, 144, 150, but not huge. I mean, one, yeah. So, what have we got? We got one, two, three, four scores over 130. So, Scoring potential, not really his uh, strength. You know, the ceiling isn't his strength. Let's have a look at uh, 2019. Similar story, I would suggest. So one score, two, three. Yeah, so four scores over 130. So yeah, not his, not his strength. But he gets a pass mark, purely because obviously he, you know, he can score 150s. Consistency. Again, pr probably a bit of a knock on his consistency. Let's have a look. Okay, maybe not. Not too bad. So, you know, two scores, three scores. So three or four scores under... That's probably obviously an injury-affected game, you'd imagine. Um, but yeah, three or four scores under 90. So not bad. Similar in 2019. Let's have a look. Yeah. So a couple of scores under 80. Consistency, again, not his strength. But he gets a pass mark. I mean, it's a tick, actually. It's better than a pass mark. It's a tick. Yeah, it's pretty consistent. Not great, but not bad either. His trends. So, scoring trends, not really great, is it? I mean, here, great trends here. When he was firing and playing every game, fit and firing, trending upwards most uh, most years. And then, yeah, just uh, trending downwards now. So, you could argue the trends are not trending upwards. So, that's, that's a question mark there. Obviously, it's about his health. You know, he's in the age demographic. He's still young, 29. In terms of footy years, he's still got plenty of years left. So, VCC, no. No, he's not really a VCC option. Maybe a VC if he's flying um, down the line, but we're not picking him uh, because of that. Job security. So, yep. He'd obviously be playing every game. He's in the best 22. Uh, not a problem there. This is the big one. Big one when we're looking at Elliot Yo, injuries, history of injuries. So, yeah, the last three years hasn't managed to get on the park. He's played 27 games, uh, a lot of soft tissue stuff, calf, hamstring, um, adductor, these sort of stuff. Not great, not great. So, yeah, that's obviously big a big question mark. That's the main question mark around the Elliot Yo pick is his injuries. But we'll talk about that in a minute. His role, another another good one to bring up. Sounds like he'd be a half back, mid rotation. So that that could help with his injury issues. You know, not being on the ball the whole time. So that kind of helps that. So uh, I like that. I like the word that's coming out of West Coast there, playing half back. Uh, other factors, yeah, maybe sub could be an issue. Maybe if he's stinking it up, he could be a sub option if he's not looking great. But not enough for us to worry about it, I don't think. Here's where he gets juicy, right? So value. So he's, he's 337k. 
price at 61. So there's big value there, big value. Potentially, if he goes well, I mean, this has been conservative, 30 points upside, maybe, maybe 40 plus. I mean, if you never know, but huge value, huge value. And the other great thing is, yeah, he could be a keeper, potentially potential keeper. If you can get a potential keeper at 337K, then happy days, lock it in. So this is where it really gets juicy big value and uh he's got the potential to be a keeper so just those two things there really sweeten the deal for me yeah he's going to fit in our team structure pretty well at his price you know we can afford um a couple of these 300k guys on on each line you'd imagine or at least a couple in our team so yep that's a tick he passes the team structure issue there yeah and risk reward big big risk big reward so yeah it's a big risk reward pick for sure. You've got to weigh that up. We don't want to be taking too many big risks like these, but yeah, these are the sort of things we have to do uh, at the start of the year to um, yeah get a get a big payoff. So well worth the risk, I think. Uh, let's look at his fixture. You'd think it'd be pretty juicy considering they finished second to bottom or bottom. Okay. So North away, Giants, Frio, Melbourne at home. And then Geelong, Port, Carlton, Richmond, Gold Coast, Hawthorne. So not the best fixture, but not bad either. They've got plenty of games at home to start the season. So what's that? Uh, three, four, five, five, six of their first 11. Not too bad. And obviously one's neutral being uh, Geelong and Adelaide Oval. So... Not the worst fixture, not the best. I wouldn't say that really affects either way, you know. Pass, Mark, it's not, not great, but not, not bad. Uh, Taggers, no, I don't, th he could be susceptible to a tag in, if he's playing in the midfield, but I don't think so. I think they'll probably go after Shuey and that if he plays in the midfield. So maybe a slight question mark, but not enough to worry us, I don't think. Ownership, so yeah, clearly very highly owned. Thirty-seven percent of coaches are taking the punt on uh, on this pick. So um, again, you know, low risk in terms of, or lower risk in terms of the amount of coaches that are taking the the, the big risk. So the risk is negated by the ownership. So that's a good thing. Team, yeah, West Coast, yeah, it's alright. They sort of suck a bit, so. Could be a slight question mark there. Do West Coast improve? Do they play kids? You know, these these are some of the things that have to come into your considerations. Um, but yeah, my gut feel is that he's going to be a really good pick. Uh, looking at his, you know, his role, looking at his, his price, you know, there's potentially 30, 40 points of upside there. Uh, and, and the fact that he could be UD6 come the end of the year if he uh, does what he, we want him to do. So my gut feel is it's a yes from me. Put him in your side. Uh, obviously watch, you know, follow the training reports, preseason matches closely in terms of his injuries. And we need to tick, tick off uh, the question mark here. But yeah, I think at this stage we can lock him in and, you know, expect 150K maybe, um, growth in him at least and then um, if he does do what we want him to do he'll be a keeper so at his price you know his price is 68 I mean if he's if he's healthy if he's named you've got to have him I think it's just a no-brainer put him in um, cash in you know two or three hundred K elsewhere and um, yeah feel good about it so that's my recommendation, Elliot, Elliot Yo. I think you should have him in your team, um, you know, uh, and watch the injury reports coming up. But by all accounts, he's going okay. Rotating halfback and midfield at the moment. So watch this space, but lock him in your team for now. Hope you enjoyed, guys. Uh, hit the like and subscribe button and uh, let us know what you want to see and we'll keep delivering. Cheers.